So Dick Fleischer said, do something with yourself. So I got some putty and I built up my nose and permed my hair and took some photographs of myself. I looked at it and it was terrific. So I immediately took the picture to Dick Zanuck's office. There was a note with Fleischer covering up a photograph and it said, I just auditioned this young actor who I think would be great for the part. When I looked at it, I, I was so overwhelmed by the way he looked, this kind of haunting quality. Tough, but yet good looking in a rugged way, but a little off balance. So I called up Fleischer and I said, uh, this guy looks great, uh, can he act? I really fell for it, hook, line and sinker. I put on about 20 pounds. I put some weights around my waist, fishing weights, and wore big heavy shoes. So it changed my whole look and my attitude. And when I passed a mirror, I didn't see that handsome blue-eyed Jewish boy. There was some kind of weird looking monster there. Nothing, because nothing was gonna make me quit that picture. Nothing. <laughs> but the result was a critically acclaimed success and a triumph for its star, Tony Curtis. I loved it. You're an honest man. You want to know, don't you? Will it make me feel better? I mean, do you promise it will make me feel better? Of course it will. Released in October of 1968, The Boston Strangler was a creative and commercial hit, with Tony Curtis winning most of the praise for his riveting performance. Tony sent me a photo with an inscription on it, which I still have, which says, thank you for saving my life. And I was very pleased and flattered. I'm always feeling like uh, something is going to happen and it never does. I was stunned that he didn't get it. It's one of the best performances I've ever seen on the screen.